Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. We are continue going to finish up this rendering talking about the environment and camera. Are you ready? Let's get started. This tutorial is a part two, a mini series of step by step basic jewelry rendering with the Keyshot 9. If you want to download the Keyshot to try, you can go to keyshot.com to download this uh, free trial to try on. And the demo file that I'm going to use is in the description below. Click on the link and put in your email address and name and you are able to download the file. The first part of the series is right here on the top right corner. If you haven't watched that, you may want to watch that first. That's getting into setting up the camera. Camera. I'm kind of looking where the position is and then right here on the third icon if you click on it you're able to get another window here since right here is showing you all the layer that we set it up into the key shot as you can see there's a shank there's a head stone prong and side stone this is an eye in front of each layer. If you turn them off, you can kind of temporarily to hide it. So if you have a hard time to drop a material into the prong, it always coming into the shank. You can turn the shank off if you want to and do whatever you need to do in the prong and then you can turn it back on. If you click on any of the layer, you're going to notice that there's a orange line that orange line means this thing is being selected so underneath here you got the position if you wanted to have a move tool you can actually move this in the key shot and i won't suggest you moving anything in the key shot if possible because it's much easier to move everything into the rhino if you like the position just click ok in this case i'm going to click that cross there um, so this is the position that i like now i will need to know what angle of the camera that i'm going to use coming over on the top over here that you have the camera so i'm going to click on the camera so far we are at a free camera if you like any of the angle that you like and you want to set it there and maybe later on you have other render you want to set it the same uh, angle this is what you can do we are going to add the new camera and then we're gonna give it a name it's a pj test and then we are going to save the current camera so what happened if it's everything i'm moving and coming back into whatever angle i, re I really want to go back to my previous one i just need to click on the pj test and it will come back to this angle over here so now we have the camera we need to assign the environment coming over to the left side that you have the under the library then you have an environment this is a lot of a preset environment to use for example the one that we are using right now is called star up and you can see everything is kind of uh, really soft lighting there it's because this is a studio setup if we coming over here and i drag this panel into the environment very quickly you can see i get some really high contract on it and the reason i'm getting that is i'm going to zoom out all the way and you can see this ball right here and you got two panel as we see on that little preview over here under the environment on the right window you could rotate you could rotating this environment as you can see that two panel is rotating remember this is not my uh, object rotating i'm rotating this two panel what it does is i'm going to moving back to here you can change the lighting on where's the light projecting to the object by rotating this cam uh, this environment and as you can see the highlight is changing the shadow is changing is because it is moving for the demonstration purpose my personally prefer to use a three panel tilted 4k so i'm going to drop this one in there this is what i use on my rendering the most 
for um for most of the thumbnail that you see on my YouTube channel. What you wanted to do is find the angle that you like. If you kind of zoom out, you can also see there's some adjustment that you can do in there. Besides just moving on this, you can also move in how high you want it on this light. So for example, at this bar I'm dragging right here, I can make the light going higher or lower. I can also drag the bar on the sides to make the light much bigger or much smaller. Another adjustment that we can have, and I'm going to zoom in to show you, is we can change the brightness. We can bring up, cranking up the brightness to get entire picture much, much brighter. Or we can make the contract it's a lot more, so it will get a lot more crispy or less contract or something like that. If you're not sure which environment you wanted to do, I will suggest you to do some comparison. The way to do it is instead of dropping the new environment into the picture that we have, we want to bring it here under the environment uh, window. So while you are doing that, you can see this is a three panel straight 4K. And if you switch it back to the environment, so you can have the previous one that we have is three panel tilt 4K. And you can drop in a few more. Let's try this uh, studio backup, a uh, backdrop. And then we're dropping in this environment right here. And then that will give us a look on uh, what it looked like. And then we can switch it in between. And so that way you can have a comparison without keep changing the environment. Now we have this environment right there. Usually for the jewelry rendering, we want to have a white background. And as you can see, now I have the lighting background. So right here on the um, right window here, you can click on the color and you can change it into the white background. In some cases, after you're changing into a white background, and because this jewelry is like high polish, so we have this reflection is too white, and then that will kind of blend into the background. It's really hard to tell like where is the boundary for our jewelry. And what you can do is actually, I like to not make it like super, super shine. So I will double click on the material and right at the roughness here, I will want to cranking up the roughness a little bit. I usually like to do 0 0.01. And what that does is it kind of still keep uh, the polished look of the sh ring shank but give it a little bit roughness so it will catch the light better and so it doesn't have like super reflection from the light as well so that's just something that I would like to do however I do like to keep the prong to be high polish the more polish you have the better reflection on the stone so this is what I would like to keep there and if we kind of uh, moving out of the angle of what we want, remember we do save that camera so we can just double click and it will go back to what we have. You can also lock the camera so you won't accidentally to touch it or anything like that. Anything has a super high polish, especially on a ring shank, I would like to lower, uh, I would like to crank it up for the roughness. So you will give a little bit more subtle reflection instead of super, super high contrast. Now, a lot of time when we're looking at the transparent stone, especially for the stone like this, uh, because it's a really high reflection and sometimes the diamond doesn't look as bright. You can kind of control by moving this panel here and to bringing up the light more toward to the stone. Um, you can kind of moving this around to find the best angle for to get the reflection on it. Sometimes all we need to do is moving around those pin onto our environment. So if we find the right angle, that will make our stone look much brighter. In some cases, like what I have here, still the stone look really uh, dark. What we wanted to do is we can add in one pin. To add one pin, you come into HDRI editor. And by adding this pin here, we can kind of moving this pin around and then you are kind of getting more reflection onto the stone. So by moving this pin, we can somehow adding some lighting into the stone if you move it into the right position. For the diamond, it's really hard to get it super, super bright. After environment is set and then you have additional pin dropping in to brighten in the stone, 
Uh, we also there's a, another way to make the stone brighter is under your lighting setting. For your lighting setting, they have uh, Keisha have a specific for jewelry. If you use the jewelry setting and you let it run a little bit, you're going to see it. The major difference is it kick up. You active. Uh, the uh, ray bounce over here and ray bounce is going to make the object is reflecting much much better sometimes I find it for the diamond specific it turning some sort of a blue color so what I like to do is have them running into the product mode and after you did the product mode I will actually coming over here for the red bounce and bump it up to 24 here. So that will give me a good rendering on the ring shank itself and it's not turning into other colors. Um, what's, whatever you are changing here, as long as you change, you will come into the custom. If you really like this one and you can actually edit the name and save it if you want to. And we can come back a little bit to adjust the pin that we have to make sure that this is, you know, it's going to bright up our diamond. I have another trick to show to make the stone brighter. Um, I will show you in more events after this tutorial. So now we have our angle. So go into the camera, go to our uh, test one. And that is the camera that we set. We have our environment and we are able to change it coming to the uh, HDR editor to change the pin. And also underneath here, you can do a lot of uh, different adjustment for the basic rendering. We're just going to stop it over here. For the next video, we are going to talk about what kind of a file we should save and for export the rendering and some little trick to make them look even fancier. I hope you enjoy the video. See you next.